Ladies and gentlemen, the drip price is below $1. Where do we go from here? How did we get here? Why did the price drop so low? There's several things I'm going to cover in this video. The first thing I'm going to cover is how did I know the price was going to go below $1? I think I was the very first person who was also an investor in drip back six months ago who said that I thought the drip price was going to go, go below $1. One dollar. We're also going to look at what I believe is the most important thing that we need to be aware of when it comes to investing in DeFi. It's not what a lot of people think. A lot of people tell you, oh, the devs need to be docs, you need to have audited contracts. Are there some big money players? Are there hedge funds behind it? Are there, you know, certain crypto influencers talking about the project? I don't think that's the most important at all. I'll be talking about the two things that I think are most important for anyone who are looking to who's looking to invest in decentralized finance. These are the two things that you have to know first. Once you understand these two factors, all other everything else is on top of that. Dev, track record, all that stuff matters only after you understand these two factors. And I'll be discussing that in this video as well. Also, uh, towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk about where do we go from here? Uh, what am I investing in now? What is my thought process now going forward post drip because all intents and purposes the window of opportunity for drip has passed i mean there's there's going to be no big money made there's no millionaires going to be coming out of drip now um th that season has already passed so where do we go from now when it comes when we start looking at new projects very specific strategy that i'm i'm using and i'll discuss that towards the end of the video so i want to talk about how did i know that the drip price was going to go below one dollar i did a video back in june june 16th and today we are it's december 12th almost six months to the day and in this video i said this was my drip price prediction going forward and this is what i said at six minutes and 13 seconds so i think long term i think that drip may see a little bit of a blip we maybe we hit 15 dollars again 20 dollars we didn't maybe but i think it's going to be short term and if we go back up i think we never break a hundred dollars again in fact, I think in six months from now, we'll be below a dollar. That I mean, that is my prediction. We have, in fact, went below one dollar. Now, how in the world did I, did I end up calling this? Well, first of all, part, as far as market timing and getting six months almost, you know, to the day, that's a little bit of luck. But I understood that the price was going to have to drop. Like there was really very few options for the price not to drop. Something incredibly huge was going to have to change in the whole drip network ecosystem for the price to really pump hardcore and not eventually go below one dollar so i think first we have to look at why did the price of drip pump in the first place so if we go back this is basically the full chart of drip it started out up here when it launched the price came down it pumped and then eventually it went parabolic and then once you understand why it went parabolic you can start to understand why the price started to drop and why it was always going to drop so when Drip was created, it had an initial token supply at launch. And I forget the token supply, maybe it was like $100,000. Uh, I'm sorry, 100,000 Drip. One of you can tell me in the comments. Then what would happen is you had to take your Drip tokens and you had to lo lock them up into the faucet. So you bought Drip on the open market and then you put them in the faucet, but you basically got 1% of your faucet balance back each and every day. What ends up happening is Everybody wants to get in because they're getting back 1% per day and they're even compounding that and they're seeing their account balances grow, their wallet balances in US dollars start growing. The reason that it starts growing has less to do with the 1% per day and has more to do with the price pumping. So you imagine getting in somewhere over here, getting 1% per day, and then the token price going up exponentially as well. I mean, the price just went parabolic. So you're getting 1% per day in a token whose price is going parabolic. I mean, there were people literally making thousands of dollars per day in drip. You only made that if you sold the drip. That's the key. The number one reason to go into drip was to ultimately sell. The only purpose of the project was to sell more US dollar value than you put in. That was it. That was the only use case that existed. There was something interesting about the drip contract. And this is important to understand as well. Even though there was a starting circulating supply, the contract was designed to start minting more tokens. So initially, the developer would say, oh, the, the token is deflationary, deflationary, deflationary. It was only deflationary in the short term, and he understood that, he knew that, it was his contract. The circulating supply was only deflationary in the beginning. So initially, people were trying to buy more 
drip tokens because they want to lock them up in the faucet. Buy more because they want to lock them up in the faucet. But as the as more people were buying drip off the exchanges, then all of a sudden there was less drip available, so that drives the price up. Low supply causes the price to go up when demand is higher than supply. But remember, the contract was going to always start minting tokens to pay out those rewards. So a lot of people were like, I don't know what you're complaining about. I'm still getting 1% per day. Yeah, you're getting 1% in a devaluing token. You're getting 1% per day in a token that is dropping. The whole reason Bitcoin was created was because Satoshi Nakamoto and those early cypherpunk guys that created Bitcoin didn't like how the U.S. government was devaluing the U.S. dollar and other central governments around the world, how they were devaluing their currencies by printing more currency, printing more currency. Now you've got something that's literally printing 1% per day on the total supply that's locked up. Understand. See, a lot of people saw this right here as a good sign. They saw the price stabilizing as a good sign. The reason the price was stabilizing is because less people were selling. The reason they weren't selling is because the price was so low. They were so they their account balances were so low. If, if they would have sold their entire wallet, they were never going to or their entire faucet balance, they were never going to ROI. So it the whole contract left them with nothing to do but just compound, compound, compound. So therefore, less tokens were going into circulation. Less tokens were being sold. So a lot of people were saying things like, at some point, this is probably going to pump. But it wasn't. It never is going to pump. And the reason is because people aren't understanding. If there's if there's 100,000 investors in Drip, for this price to go back up, just try to use really simple, simple numbers. For this thing to go up from a dollar to $10, we need 10 times the brand new investors to come in. But guess what? At some point, the price is still going to go down because a drip contract will always print more tokens to give you 1% per day on your balance in the faucet. So what's happening now is the, the supply is growing almost exponentially. No matter how much goes in the faucet, 1% more gets printed every single day. And so the supply is just, I mean, we're at almost a million drip right here. The circulating supply is sitting at 902,000. Look, the contract balance, the only amount of drip available in the contract right now until the contract prints more, which it prints more automatically, is 3,000. Well, half percent per day is 4,500. So that's gone. I mean, and more are going to get printed. And the price will continue to drop every single day that more people are selling. So how did I know the price was going to go below a dollar? Because I knew the token supply was always going to eventually increase. And I knew eventually it would increase exponentially as more and more people are selling. The other thing that I understood that I knew it was possible the price could go back up. Possibly. There was always a slim possibility the price could go up. But it was only going to happen if the developer could develop something that would change the entire ecosystem. People would have to want to do something with their drip other than sell it, which would require shifting the entire mentality of the ecosystem. Well, it, that was that's a tall measure to tell people, hey, all of a sudden, I know you got into this thing to try to earn 1% per day. You're not going to be able to get 1% per day any further. We're going to shift this up on you and we're going to somehow make it better. Well, what could be better than that? So I think that was going to be a tall order. And I think he understood that. That's why he started shipping his development. I think the developer launched Animal Farm in his mind. That was going to be the new thing and it was going to be bigger and better and eventually people forget it, would forget about drip. Unfortunately, that has not happened. Now, the other thing with Drip that I saw was the developer, I did not think he had an appetite to develop on Drip. And I've been proven right. And I didn't want to say this back then, but there was a lot of broken promises. And a lot of the broken promises, you got to understand back in October of 2021, he said there was a whole bunch of promotion coming. And when I said something about that in January, people said, oh, you're being impatient. Well, we're over a year. Where is the South American Social Media Agency coming on board? And can I just be honest? What was a South American social media agency actually going to do that was going to change this ecosystem? Nothing. By the way, last year, about around this time, he said the website was going to be brand new. They were going to do a brand new website that was going to be much more serious. It was going to be, you know, on par with large brokerage firms like, you know, JP Morgan and stuff like that. Well, the website never got changed. It never got updated. There was going to be a brand new white paper, a serious white paper. Okay. That never happened. And that was going to happen after... January. This was going to happen after February. This was going to happen by the summertime. It never happened. So I, I think the developer, when I saw basically, I don't want to say broken promises, but when I saw things not getting done, I know I said broken promises earlier, but when I saw things not getting done, I was like, okay, I don't think there's any 
development coming. But which, by the way, I did not think a website was going to change the ecosystem. I didn't think, uh, you know, new promotion was going to change the ecosystem. I, it was going to have the. Then he was going to come out with these scratchy and and this thing and that thing. What? Okay, a lottery alone is not going to change it. Like there's, it's just not. And I think some people are still saying Scratchy is going to come. Okay, great. It's not going to change the, the ecosystem. The, at the end of the day, people still want to sell more drip than they put in. Period. End of story. So I want to talk about the two most important things to be aware of when we're investing in DeFi. We're talking about real decentralized finance. Understand the difference in DeFi and, and CeFi. Centralized finance uh, is when it requires a company or an individual to manipulate something to give you a return. They may be trading, they may have some sort of business, you know, and, and, and that's fine. But specifically, when you're investing in true decentralized projects, a lot of things claim to be DeFi that's not. But when you're investing in a true decentralized financial project, there's two things that you have to understand. The first is, and by the way, let me say what you don't need to worry about initially. Initially, you don't need to worry about the devs and whether they're doxxed or not. Bernie Madoff was doxxed. And he still ran one of the biggest Ponzi schemes in the world. You don't need to worry about audits initially. They're good to know. They're good to have, but they're not that important initially. You don't need to worry about which hedge funds are investing. Look, hedge funds were investing in Luna and it still collapsed. You know, FTX, Almeida Research, anyone, they were doxxed. They were a hedge fund. Everybody used to love when FTX went into a project or Almeida Research went into a project. Well, guess what? They all collapsed. So, Docs devs don't matter as much. Audits don't matter as much. I'm not saying they're not important. I'm just saying that's not the most important thing. Hedge fund investors definitely don't matter. I, I'm, be, I'm beginning to realize most of these hedge funds literally don't understand crypto. And by the way, I'm not a financial advisor. None of this is financial advice. I'm a cryptocurrency enthusiast, but I do have some experience by being here. So I'm talking from my own experience, but don't take this as personal advice uh, for yourself and your finances. The two things that I'm aware of that I think are important to be aware of are the tokenomics of a project. When we say tokenomics, we're talking about the token supply, is it going to expand indefinitely? At what rate is it going to expand? And what are the reasons that it will expand? Token economics. What's the tokenomics? And the market psychology. And what I mean by that is, what are other investors thinking as they invest in this project? So for me, here's what I saw. Initially, I knew that the token supply was going to be limited. So initially, I knew that would cause the price to go up because market psychology people want one percent per day not only are they going to get one percent per day but they're getting one percent per day in a token that is going up in value the only thing for me that was a bit of a wild card with drip in the beginning was i thought is it going to catch on are people going to see in the beginning it actually started out uh, this chart goes back to july of 2021 and it kind of sort of started fizzing out here for a month or so a month or two and then it went up and then it kind of went level and then it went up and it just started going crazy. When this started happening, because I got in six months after it launched, when I realized people were, were in this thing, I was like, okay, I knew the price was going to pump. I didn't know how much it was going to pump or how far it was going to pump, but I knew it was going to pump because if people kept buying, there was only uh, that limited token supply. I, again, I keep saying 100,000, it may have been more, but there was a limited token supply and that, that was going to cause people to buy the token on the market, lock it up in the faucet. So it was going to decrease the circulating supply. Hence why the developer said it was a deflationary token in the beginning. When it decreased the token supply, it drives the price up. But at some point, there was always going to be an increase in the supply because the tokenomics in the white paper at the time, and I have not been able to find it since I read the white paper the first time. I went back, back in June and tried to find it for that video, and I couldn't find it. But it was always known, it was discussed in Telegram, that don't worry, when the supply decreases enough, the t contract will mint tokens to pay rewards. And market psychology, people thought that was a good thing. I knew that if it was going to mint tokens to pay rewards and people are getting 1% per day, then the amount of rewards that are going to have to get minted because people kept compounding, compounding, compounding. The amount of rewards that were going to have to get minted was going to have to grow rapidly. So the token supply was always going to start growing rapidly. It would be slow at first, and it would grow faster and faster, which is why we see token supply grew so much that the price dropped. And the reason that, and a lot of YouTubers in Drip and investors in Drip, and I think they're sincere when they say this, they're wrong, but they're sincere. They're like, okay, price is leveling out. It's going to go up. Well, they are right. Price has leveled out. It's not going to go up. 
But the reason prices leveled out is because less people are selling. And the reason less people are selling is because everybody that was buying back here and people were buying, even even over here, some of these people, they they're still losing money. And so at this point, the drip price is below a dollar when it was above a hundred dollars. If you ball drip any time over here, you're deep in the red. So there's no reason for them to sell. They might as well just keep compounding, keep compounding. And you may think, well, if, if eventually it's going to flatten out, eventually to go back up. And again, you're, you're not understanding. The drip supply right now is sitting at 900,000 with only 3,000 in the contract. It's going to pay these rewards out and have to print more. But the point being is, who's going to look at a chart like this and think, oh, now's a good time to get in? Who's going to look at this? Remember, when markets go down, Human psychology, market psychology says to sell. I know smart money is supposed to be buyers, right? But most people are selling. And in this case, they're right because the token price is just going to keep expanding. There is nothing to cause this token to become deflationary permanently, period. And without that, the price cannot go up. So the two most important things to be aware of is what are the tokenomics of the project? And then what is the market psychology? What are people going to think about that project? when they start interacting with it. So where do we go from here? And by the way, I don't wanna say that docs, devs aren't important, audits aren't important, other investors aren't important, influencers aren't, all that stuff's important. I just think the tokenomics are the most important thing. It's token supply, how fast is it gonna expand, what's gonna cause it to expand, or how fast is it gonna deflate and what's gonna cause it to deflate. That is the most important thing for just about any project. If the tokens are locked up and then they're gonna get released at some point in the future, when are they getting released in the future? how large a supply, what percentage of that uh, is getting released on the market. And you have to figure out what that is that's going to do to the price if a certain percentage of tokens get dumped on the market. And then, of course, once you understand tokenomics, how do you think the overall market, how do you think overall investors are going to respond to that project and that project's tokenomics? They're one and the same. You cannot separate the tokenomics from the project. So where do we go from here? I have a strategy and I look to invest in high-risk projects and I come in with a small amount. And I, my whole goal was to try to they're high risk high reward if you got in drip early enough you can make a fortune the thing is when we were getting into drip we did not know if we were going to be able to make a fortune or not we did not know how long it was going to last you never know if you're getting in early if you're getting in late you never really know and if you the more early you get into a project the more risk there is so it's high risk high reward i come in small into a high risk project and i focus on that project and i try to build out a position and the whole goal is to ultimately come in here and to create some profits. So let's just say this is my initial investment. Let's just say it's $5,000 and I'm able to get some profits out of this thing. Oh, that doesn't do right. Let's do it this way. Because ideally you want your profits to be bigger than your initial investment, right? So I, I come in with a small uh, with a small amount. It could be five hundred dollars, could be five thousand dollars. Again, not financial advice. Then the whole goal is to be able to make some profit and then to be able to take those profits and to invest into more stable, more real yield type projects. Projects that have real use cases. Projects that have real businesses that are actually making money on business operations. They're not making money surely on tokenomics. Anything that's making money purely on the tokenomics of the project because the supply is decreasing and they somehow have been able to pump demand, that's going to always be short-lived. So I try to look for projects that are creating a real demand, a real yield. I have a video I did on my channel a while back talking about six projects that are creating real yield. These projects pay out APYs and APRs 20, 30, 40, 50. There's one paying out over 100% APR right now just because it's a newer project. But they're paying that APR out in a way that is sustainable because they're paying out from their real businesses, their centralized businesses in most cases, part of them are decentralized. But they're paying, they're, they're creating a profit and they're distributing that profit to token holders. If you want to see this in action, you can go down in the description and you can subscribe to my three-year crypto retirement challenge. You can see where I'm taking $5,000. At least that was the goal. It's a little more than that now. I'm investing into high-risk, high-return crypto projects. And the whole goal is over three years to be able to earn $50,000 per year in passive income in real yield projects that hopefully will be sustainable for many, many, many years to come. The very first email you get, you're going to get a full breakdown of this challenge, exactly what I'm doing, what I'm investing in, um, and what I'm trying to do. What are my real yield projects that I'm investing in? You're going to get all the breakdown once you put in your name, your email, and then click submit. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, 
if you understand the tokenomics, if you understand market psychology, and then you practice risk management, there's a lot of opportunity that still exists in decentralized finance. A lot of people out there are like, oh, this is the end of crypto. That's because it is a bear market. Anytime we're in a bear market, people want to call gloom and doom and it's over. See, when people are selling, I'm buying as long as I'm buying tokens whose supply is not going to increase infinitely. So in this market, I'm a buyer. I'm an investor. I'm bullish on Bitcoin. I'm very, very bullish on Ethereum. Does that mean prices can't continue to drop? Of course they can. But that's when we use risk management and we diversify. And if you use proper risk management and you diversify and you believe long term in this technology, just like I do, I think long term, we're going to be OK. In fact, long term, I think we're going to be the winners. Long term, I think the real wealth shift is going to happen with those people who see the potential and they are able to take advantage early. Ladies and gentlemen, decentralized cryptocurrency equals freedom. This is Crypto Wealth. I'm out.